And we are back, folks. Another edition of the Michigan Football Film Study, focused on the defense with that man they call Vance Bedford, who now doing the games, maybe hitting Coach Vance up. Like, Coach Vance, what did you think of this, right? Coach Vance, what did you think of that? And this is one of those games where, because Vance, you can be, hey, look, you, you, you do these film studies like we're in the film room, like you, like it's Coach Bedford. You treat us the same way. Right. That's right. All the way. I don't hold anything back. I really don't. I mean, it's, it's football to me is a game. It's entertaining, and I used to coach that way for one reason. I wanted to keep the players into what was going on. So if you could make it a little bit fun at times, but coach them hard at the same time, they pay more attention. I mean, because in college, those guys they go to the classroom, they to the professor all day long. So why do I want them to come to my meeting and be a professor and put them to sleep? So I always got them involved in what we were doing by asking them questions and, you know, trying to make it fun at the same time while coaching them hard, too. It, it, it feels like the shoe was on the other foot this week, though, because I feel like the fans were a little harder on the defense than you were because you came out of this game saying, hey, man, I think they showed a lot of improvement in I this game. It, I thought it was a dominant performance. I mean, I was wrong about the score. I said the score is going to be 49 to 7. I mean, 49 to I, I, 52 to 9. They only got seven. So I missed about two points. <laughs> For to me, that was a butt whipping. And they came out and gave us, first of all, they had two new coordinators. That's number one. So you go into that ball game as a defensive coordinator, not knowing what to expect. And the first play, they came up in F FSL, things we've been talking about. No game. The very next play, they came up and unbalanced. We made a great adjustment. No game. We had a three and out right away. And so people look back and like, well, they moving the ball. No, they're not. They hit us on a trick play. And we're going to show that on, on the cutups. And I'm going to explain to you some things that I thought should have happened. But if you take away that trick play, they didn't do a whole lot. So to me, our players play smart. They took the coaching to the field. And you hear me talk all the time. If you count to three, you can play for me. In this game, I should also say sometimes four. Sometimes okay. you got to count to four. Okay. Well, you know, we're gonna so show you. Right. We're gonna show the folks in the film study. So let's we'll break it down for them before we get started. Want to remind y'all we don't own this footage because we don't own the footage. We make sure that we pay homage to those who do by telling you that we're using their footage strictly for the entertainment, education, and edification of you, the viewer. No, no sponsorship, no advertising at all. I say that every week, not just to fill time, but to let those folks know. We're not trying to take their stuff. But we are trying to ask you, like, if you love what Coach Vance does, then show your love by helping fund the film study. You see that link right there in the comments section. A lot of you give Coach Vance comments after every, every film study. Click that top link where you can help fund the film study. Or if you're just reading the description. You can find that link in the description as well to the PayPal fund, the defensive film study with Vance Beffin. At the end of the, of, the, of the season, we cut Vance and Tiki and Maggie a big check. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, I don't give Tiki a buffalo bone. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Vance, uh, one thing that you have really talked a lot about this season, not unique to Michigan, is that, hey, you – Formation to the boundary causes problems. As I bring up this first play, remind us why formation to the boundary is so tough, uh, why it puts so much stress on the defense. You know, most coaches across the country, they play some form of field defense. What I mean by that, if it's 11 personnel, three wide receivers, one back and a tight end, the nickel back is going to always go to the field. So that means a lot of times the backers to the boundary have to adjust out. And so you can have a backer sometimes walked out on a fast receiver. So sometimes that's a difficult adjustment. And the best thing for us so far this year, people have done that. They haven't actually thrown the ball to the boundary. So that's been a benefit to us. And the next thing we talked about is unbalanced formation. Well, guess what? The first two plays was FSL, formation to the boundary, and unbalanced. And our defense adjusted perfectly. It was outstanding. I'm like, this is outstanding coaching. The players are taking what they learn in the classroom and practice to the field on game day. To me, you you couldn't have played it any, but I was very impressed with what I saw. I had my dad 
uh, watching the game with me. He's 91 years old. He was saying the same thing. He said, that, that's really good. My dad was a football coach. So I was impressed with this, this whole game by the defense. I really was. All right. So we bring up the first play right now as the Wolverines. Vance is only two points off on the score, folks. Two. I'm getting closer. We need, we need to start betting on your predictions, Vance. <laughs> Take that to the booth, man. All right. Here we go right now. You look at the formation we have right now. That's FSL. If you can count one, two, three. The back is four guys to the boundary. You got the X receiver to the field with a cut split. With a cut split. I don't talk about that in this ball game throughout the cutups. He has a cut split. In other words, he has a minor split. Normally, he would be between the hash and the numbers. Right now, he's on the hash mark. So I always ask this question. Why is that guy lining there? And they also have FSL. So it's a lot of indicators right here. Now, our first call, and you're going to laugh at this, is, is Oki Sam. We bring the nickel Sam off the edge, which has been our base call. Odd Sam versus FSL. You couldn't have been a better call than this. I mean, because now look out the guys. So if I'm the outside back or the defensive end, he aligns on number two. So guess what he did, Sam? He kind of from the outside, one and two, aligned right there. The backer, he relates to number three. He count one. Two, three, both, there he is. The mm -hmm. other backer, even though he's dropping to the field, you know what he's relating to, Sam? Two weak or four strong. Guess what his, guess what his two is, Sam? His, his number two is into the back, into the boundary. So, again, everybody's just counting. What a great deal this is. One, two, three, and sometimes four. That's how simple a game is. Just be able to count. So, let's let it run, Sam. All right. Here we go. You can see what happened. The offensive line, we, they're doing the elephant walk. In other words, they're going flat down the line of scrimmage. That's the first time for a defensive line that you're getting a naked or a boot. Okay. The tight end, he motions back in. He's trying to pin the defensive end, okay? As you can see now, the back is going flat across. So he's almost even with the quarterback, which is an indicator. Let's talk about the receiver at the, at the top. I say he, he's doing the old ladder route. He climbs inside and he's flattening out his route. The number two receiver to the boundary, he's running the corner route. The outside receiver running the curl. This is a great combination route for a quarters corner or deep third corner, trying to make them bite up and then throw a corner route behind them. Okay, and then the quarterback is going to boot out to his left. Okay, everybody see that picture right here. Okay, right. let's go to the defense, Sam. Right. So now you can see here, here's Sam. We angling to the boundary. Okay. The nickelback is coming off the edge. So for the defensive end to the boundary, because he's angling to the boundary, he needs to be looking at that tight end. He got to make sure he can't get pinned by that guy. Okay? So there's the front. So now we're going to the coverage of it. So here we go right now. The corner at the top is deep third. The safety at the top, he's coming down, curl the flat. The other safety, he's going deep middle third. The cornerback's deep outside third. The defensive end, 32, he's a flat defender. He's in his drop already. The next linebacker, hook curl. The last back on the hash, he's hook curl to the field. But guess where all this work is? One, two, three, sometimes four, and to the boundary. So his drop is actually straight back. Okay, let's see what happens. Ooh, we got this defensive end, oh, this tackle, he did a great job. He did not allow himself to get pinned. Watch him. Watch the defense. Look, watch it. Boom, boom. Look, oh, great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great execution by him. So that, that was excellent. So now we're going to watch the coverage aspect of it. Okay, so here we go. So again, we did a great job in the back end as far as our drops relating to different things. Excellent job. Look at the coverage. There is nowhere to go with this football. There's nowhere to go there. Now, the only thing about my man, 32, he could be a little bit wider because anytime you get any type of sprint out or boot, if a guy's a curl flat dropper, he becomes a flat dropper. If a guy's a hook curl dropper, he becomes a curl dropper. Everybody should now push right now to the second coverage, and that'll take everything away. Again, this is the first play of the game. Jesse had no idea what these guys going to do because they just had a two new coordinators call of the game. So his base call 
is Sam and Lightning. That's our base call for us. And the first play of the game, we executed it to perfection. They had a no game. That's a great job. All right. Let's go to play two, Coach. This is the very next play. We've been talking about formation attacking us. This is going to be an unbalanced formation. In other words, they got the tackle a tight end over, and they got a short side, back side. So here we go. So this is lightning right here. Okay. Let's Again, see. we're bringing a guy off the edge. Okay. Let me go ahead and get it set up. So right now, so we bring a guy off the edge, and we're rolling the cover two. I mean, look, look at this, guys. Look at the execution of this. I mean, it's like I think Jesse must be on their headsets. Because make this call like this, he must – it's something not right. That's just too perfect of a call for this play right here. Look at that thing. That's, that, that's just unreal. That is a perfect call for what they're doing. My man must have a crystal ball on the sideline. He must have that because right now we bring the nickel again. The backside safety, he's coming down as a curl drop. The corner is a cloud. The safety half field player, Sam. If a nickelback, keep on coming, baby. Keep on coming. You might get a sack. You don't have the back. Keep on coming. We got the back covered by the cloud corner. That's the only thing that might be a little bit off with this is that indecision right there. Go get you a sack. But coverage-wise, pressure-wise, what a great call. What a great call. Look at the pursuit. Look at all the players. Look at, look at Graham. 310 pounds. He out there us into the ball. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I thought the defense had a dominant performance in this ball game. I really did. First two formations, the things we've been talking about, and they adjusted it to perfection. So, so as I before I bring up the next play, Vance, I think this is an important thing. You've been talking about it this season. They they need it's just like a lot of teams. You say give a lot of teams problems for a reason, and here first two plays of the game, they were ready for it, even though they were hadn't seen what this OC was going to do what were the adjustment or what was the adjustment on these first couple of plays that you saw the, the biggest thing is on the very first play is strictly about can you count so that the first play was fsl so they had trips to the boundary so the cornerbacks on number one the curl flat drop on number two so that's that was a defensive end bam he walks out the back to that side he relates to number three so guess what he did he caught one two three he walked out on number three okay the last remaining backer his number two to the field was in the backfield strong. So he related to him. So it's about counting. If you can count, you can get a line most of the time. That's all football is. It's that simple. It's not, it's not algebra. It's going back to arithmetic when you're in the second, third, and fourth grade. One, two, three, four. That's all it so is. That, so was that the adjustment that the play they they were able to get the players to be able to relate to the count better? Yes, that's all it is. Just relating to your count. Because in other words, your drop tells you how to get a line. As a curl flat dropper, I'm going to always be on number two. If I'm a hook curl dropper, I'm on number three. Okay, so if I'm a hook curl dropper the other way, I'm related to number two. If I don't have number two, that means my number two got to be in the backfield. In that situation, he was to the boundary, so my drop is straight back. Why? Because they got four guys into the boundary. They got to come back to me. This is mm -hmm. about counting. That's all football is. Some coaches make it like it's, uh, like I said, it's linear algebra. No, nah, but we're talking about arithmetic. That's how simple it is for us right now. Best coaches can make it saying you can simplify. They can oh. simplify the complex, Coach Bedford. Like you always, do. always. You want the players to play fast. If they got to think about everything. That means they're playing slow. All right. So first quarter, they are moving the ball some. Uh, you know, they get down. And, and they're threatening the end zone, and Michigan comes up with a big interception. But your man, Little Mike, you said during the game, well, there's a but here. There, there's a but. There, there's a but. I'm sorry. I can't help myself. I have people uh, on Twitter texting me. Now, Coach, he set a ball thrown. Somebody sent, put a picture of the play. What happened? See, right now, we're in cover six. Cover six is this, guys. We roll them to the, to the boundary. The corner's in a cloud technique. So you can see them inside technique. I'm getting ahead of myself. That's okay. Okay. The safety is a half field guy. The back to that side, he's going straight back on the hash. He's a curl play. Okay. Now, anytime you get a three by one and you're playing quarters, you can tell that corner to walk up and you take them one by yourself. Okay. So that means now the nickel back and the back and the safety 
they work in three on two. So in other words, the corner, you by yourself. He's wide. He's not going to be a threat in the passing game. So you take corner, him corner on number one, hey, you got him, that's it. You got him. You got him no help unless he does a shallow cross. All so right. now the nickel, the backer, and the safety, they're going three on two on two on three. And that's what you see right now. It appears little Mike is head up the outside shoulder. So in other words, if you took the corner out of the mix, you with me? just take him out of the mix, technically little Mike is, is a kind of a flat to quarters player to that side. He has anything deep off of two and three. Let's tell people, so Lil Mike is on number two. He's on number two. two. On his outside, the head shoulder, the outside, the safety, number three, and the back got anything coming inside. So it's three guys on defense defending the two guys based on the routes. Gotcha. Okay? All so right. Here we go. All right. So here we go. Stop. Freeze it. Freeze. I'll go back just a little bit. Just a little bit if you can. I can. Okay. Now. A little bit more, a little bit more. That ball's not stopping right there. See, that ball's not being thrown, fellas. Now, let's look at little Mike. See, little Mike is square and he's flat footed. Where's that receiver right now? It's outside. So technically, how they just played it because of that receiver's release, little Mike is technically a quarters player. That's safety and linebacker, they playing quarters on the number three guy. So if this quarterback right now releases this ball to the end zone, the Mike is beat, in my opinion. In my opinion. I didn't say I was right or wrong. I said that's my opinion. So my opinion to me is right. <laughs> so I don't worry about nobody else. When I look at this picture right now, I'm saying, the Mike, you're wrong. But they could be teaching and coaching something totally different. Okay, so let's let it run. Mike made a great play right here. Okay, now that's the quarterback right now, if he throw that football, it's free. Oh, that's a great shot. Mike is coming off like a cloud corner. He read number three set down, so I sit down. Now, who can tell me right now that the safety could get to that guy? He can't. Thank you. And let's see Superman. So, in other words, the way it's playing out is like when number three sat down, Mike could come off and the safety can go over the top. But for the safety where his alignment was, he couldn't get there unless little Mike got him back inside. The Mike let the guy outside right now. So technically, a long time ago, I used to give two, two grades when I used to grade a player. I used to give a technique grade and a performance grade. For me right now, if I was given a technique grade, he got a minus. That means he didn't get the job done. He's not where he's supposed to be. Performance grade, he'd get a plus. Why? He, he got his hands on the ball. But then I got older and later, so I just gave a grade. So right now, he just got a minus. <laughs> So don't make that easy because he wasn't supposed to be there, in my opinion. And the ball goes to the University of Michigan and great field position for JJ. So minus on technique, for, but plus on making a play. There you go right there. There you go right there. <laughs> so you got away with it. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. <laughs> because, again, even from that look, the quarterback should have thrown the ball in the end zone. He, he's throwing it to his tight end. He was throwing it to the tight end. He was. If he throws it to the outside guy, whoever the quarterback coach was, he didn't read this the right way. Quarterback coach didn't explain it to the kid right now. If the safety tucks up inside, I'm going one-on-one -on -one to the fade route. Okay? Mm -hmm. I see the safety over the top, then I'm going to throw it down low. The safety was tucked inside, therefore, he should have thrown right down a little mic on the one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I'm not a quarterback coach, but I listen to some good quarterback coaches, and that's how they know I'm a teacher. But I'm not a quarterback coach now. Now, that, that, that's on the previous regime. That's Big Al's spot. <laughs> Professor Al, he might tell you something totally different. But I'm a DB coach, and I know what I don't like to see in coaches oh, I've heard over the years. Vance, you know how long we take going over Michigan offense? Now you want him to go over Indiana offense, too? Hey, Professor Al could do it now. I'm just telling you. I know he can, but that I only got so much time in a day, Vince. Al will spend 30 minutes on that play. You and I spend 10 minutes. <laughs> he he, he going to give you 30 different ways. If this, if they'd have done that, no. Nah. I don't talk <laughs> about this is a defense, and this is how you play. Now, quarterback, you make a decision on how you play. It's not that complicated. It really isn't. Okay. All right. On to the next one, Coach Bedford. 
Flea Flicker, they got him on this one. Ooh, we're going to talk about this. This might take a couple of minutes. Five minutes going to take seven minutes, okay? We're going to stop right there. Boom. Now, let's talk about this. Ooh, I say, you can count to three, you can play for me, and sometimes four. So right now, they are in cover six. And what cover six is, Cloud to the boundary with a half field safety. See the corner, because it's empty, he teed it way inside. Okay, so initially I'm thinking he's blitzing, but he's not. That safety is a half field guy. Okay, the safety to the field and the hash, he's a quarters player. Okay, to me, the corner is a quarter player. He and the safety to the top, we got four guys, we got a zone there. So it's two on four deep. That's what they should have said. You see the nickel back? He relates to number two. He's a quarter flat guy. The next backer, he relates to number three. So guess where he aligned? On number three. You see the back in the box, everybody? Mm-hmm. Technically, he's a curl drop over there. He relates to number two. Where is his number two? I don't see no number two over there, man. I do. Number two is number four. So he still counting from the outside in. I look outside to my left, that's one. You don't count the quarterback. So the next guy, that's his number two. So technically, his number two just lined up on the other side. So anytime you are a curl dropper and your number two go vertical, guess what you ought to do? You carry him. But you got to work on that. Now, see that safety in corners to the top? Then you got two guys covering one. We don't have enough guys to the field. We don't. We're in trouble right now. If you look at the previous play on the interception, it was three by one. So went to the corner. He walked up and pressed. They went three on two. There's four guys out here right now. Everybody got to be able to count to that extra guy. This corner should have said to the safety, we're going to zone this across the board. We've got too many numbers. The quarter safety should look at the backside safety and say, I need help. So for that backside safety, I'm going to count again for you. He has one. He's out wide. He, anytime there's one guy in the backfield or nobody in the backfield, he has a number two receiver. Where's his number two at right now, Sam? Number two receiver to the to what you jump to the field or to the boundary? For the boundary safety, where is his number two? Man, his number two all the way on the other side. Ooh. Amen to that. That <laughs> is number two. So, but you see my point for mm-hmm. that half field safety and for that backer, they got a number two. He just decided to line up on the wrong side of the ball and make four guys over there. But I don't the safety to the to the boundary don't see it, and the backer doesn't see it. And the corner and the safety to the field, they didn't communicate. Okay, so now everybody, I hope everybody can see that. If you count to four, that makes things different. If you count to three, you can play for me. Sometimes four. And this is four. Okay, let's let it roll. See what happens. Leaf flicker versus over cover six. So yeah, you can name them all. You- Say what all the responsibilities are now, Vance. I mean, the, the guy. Can you can you tell me why the 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 corner crept inside at, at the top? Well, they've done that before. A lot of times, a three by one. If the back is away, that makes it four strong. He'll play inside for run support, and also he take away the slant by body alignment. Mm-hmm. What a lot of people do when they do that, once they recognize pass, they will turn and play a trail technique. Play underneath. They'll just take him out the mix. So when you do that, you tell them the last the, the curl dropper, his work now has to come from the other side. His number two is to the other side right now because we technically took number one away by with a half field safety in the corner. Uh-huh. So that that extra receiver out there by himself, he ain't counting the book. We got two guys on one over there by how most people play in this particular formation. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and run it. So here we go. Freeze, 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 freeze. Everybody see the problem we got right now? See, nobody's aware of number four. I have no idea where the linebacker going. He is going inside and out. You see, his key is that number four. What's number four doing? He releasing for a pass. Okay. The two guys that can pull the trigger right now is a nickelback who does, and the back of his own number three. Because both of those guys are blocking. That go your two guys right now. This cornerback, again, I'm going to go back to this. He should have zoned this off and saw the big picture. He didn't see that. Let it run. We're going to go to the end zone copy in a minute. 
That's a backside state to the chase. They should have been there earlier. So here we go. A gadget play to score. And they dancing. Yippee ki yay. But again, it's about count. It's where, where are all my checkers at? Where are they? And defend the checkers. So here, here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay. So we're going to show first how they block this. Okay. Boom. So we block in the corner and the nickel back with a tight end. So freezer, stop right there. Mm -hmm. and that's another thing I forgot. In a three by one formation, you with me? Why is the tight end at number two? Do you know most of the ball game, he was a number three guy? Normally, he's in that position to block or some kind of gadget play. So, again, those are some things when you get in the meeting room after this, you start talking about that. The tight end normally is in the number three spot. Now he's in the number two spot. That means he's out there for one reason and one reason only, to block. So either we're getting a bubble, we're getting a gadget play, something's going on. That's why he's in that spot right now. Okay. So here we go right now. Just let it run. The cornerback never saw the guy motioning to form quads. The safety right now, he should be working three to four. The corner should be working one to two. The safety, he never sees number four. So let it run, Sam. Double pass. So the safety uh -huh. didn't see it. He never saw it. He never saw number four. Anytime guys are releasing, you can't pull the trigger. You can't pull the trigger. You, well, Coach, I, I saw the ball thrown. I got a guy releasing. They got, and this ball thrown way behind a lot of scrimmage. So if I got a guy releasing, he's not coming to block me, I got to stay back. I have to. But sometimes you see too much. When you see too much, that means you're not seeing anything at all. Yeah, you know who saw it was uh, – Backside safety. And, and and your backer, your uh, Mike he Barrett. Late. He late to the dance. He's late to the dance. He saw it. He saw it too late. Plus, his alignment not helping him out. You can see the corners are in the box. I mean, he waving his hand like hello, hello, and my receiver saying goodbye, goodbye. He need to be wider. But again, a trick play. They they giving us everything you could imagine. And all they have is a touchdown. We've seen FSL several times in the first quarter. We've seen uh, uh, unbalanced. Now we see this right here. And okay, all so, they got out of that is, is seven points. So talk me through this uh, real quick, Vance, and then we move on to the next play. So your backer, because you got one to the boundary, he you, he can widen out to the field? Yeah, because who's over there? See, the corner's already there. We don't need him. And see, anytime they go to empty the front, they run different stunts. To take away the quarterback draw. And because I walked a corner in there, he's a, he's an extra guy for quarterback draw. So if I was a linebacker, I'm gonna line at least on the tackle. That's how wide I'm gonna be. Okay, because I'm related to number four. Because number four goes vertical, guess who gotta take him? He does, because that's his number two. Uh -huh. And people are like, Coach, you crazy. This four guys over there, I'm gonna start counting. He counts from his left to his right. So I count the receiver next to the sideline. That's one. So now I start, you don't count the quarterback. The next guy, that's his number two. So I'm responsible for him if he goes vertical anytime you're playing any type of half field guy. So that's my guy. He should be hauling butt with him all the way. Mm -hmm. But he didn't see it that way. Why? You don't work on it and talk about it. The best thing about this play is happening now. It won't happen to him again. Later on in this game, they come up in quads again. They had it corrected. Did a great job. So if you were highlighting, you'd highlight your safety and your linebacker? Safety, both safeties, the linebacker and the corner. Because the cornerback never saw it either. There's four guys over there. What you breaking on? I got the nickel back in the back of dropping. I wait and make sure something's going on. So he got his zone and see everything. The safety, he got to work four to three. And number four is releasing that him. You got no reason to be going vertical. He got no reason to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to go to a story. I'm with the, the Chicago Bears. I got a young safety named Mike Brown from Nebraska. And I always told him, he's a half-field guy. I said, your first kid is number one. I don't care about the O-line quarterback. 
your first key is number one. If he's blocking, you can pull the trigger. If he's not blocking, you stay back. So they give us a hard play action pass. My corner didn't read number two. He pulled the trigger. He's gone. Mike Brown kept his eyes right where he's supposed to be, read his key, and accepted the football. Now, I'll give you another story. I'm at Oklahoma State. And I'm at uh, playing Colorado. Same situation. Okay. Same kind of all play action pass. You know what the safety was doing? What he was taught before. He looking inside. They throw a touchdown. All he has to do is read his keys. I get one guy who actually listened to me and took it to the field, another guy who didn't. So again, it's something you work on and it's taught, you gotta have great discipline to take those plays away. Okay. All right, coach. We learning some things. Learning some things for sure. And I'm sure all these things are things that they're going over in the meeting room on the one big play they gave up all day. And what you said was otherwise a dominant effort. Oh, my goodness. It took them to the woodshed, man. They, hey, they still out. Indiana's still in the woodshed right now. We didn't even let them get on the plane. We didn't feed them. We're not letting them go to the restroom. They're just out in the woodshed waiting for us to give them a free release. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go back. One of the favorite dudes on the team. You got to love Nick Kenneth Grant. Big man. Kenneth Grant keeps making big plays, man. Keeps making big plays. Man, it, this is this is a blitz right here. When he's dropping, you are gonna watch my big fella. He actually took a peek to see what he had to drop and got his hand on the ball. And so first, of all, go ahead. So first of all, let me your eyes on this one for two reasons. It's something you've been talking about. Number one, that you know your your droppers, whether they're your edge droppers or your interior line guys that know your responsibility when you drop, right? That's right. And this was an example that you highlighted, because, I mean, I noticed he almost got the interception, but I didn't notice him take the peak. And you noticed him taking the peak, and you highlighted in this in this telestration, which was some... I mean, third down and two, we bring the heat right now, and big man took his step. When he opened up, he looked, look, look, look at him look outside. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's outstanding. That is a great job. Now, if he had some hands, if he had, I tell you what, if he had some jelly on his hands for that biscuit, he wouldn't have dropped that bad boy. He'd have had that good. Look, man, look at him look. Outstanding. Because if he'd have kept going with more width, that ball would have hit a slant, we could have had a problem. That's a great job. That is a great <laughs> job right there. I love it. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> hey, man. But, but Vance, that's some, that's some, some great coaching and then some guys taking the coaching because it was just a couple games ago. You're like, man, where is he dropping? Yes. Not yes. not him, but just the guys yeah. up front. Where yeah. is he dropping? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, just understand understand where your threats are. Anytime you're a dropper or a defensive lineman, you go, you take your first window away, and once you clear the first window, then you go to the next one. You know, but what's been happening is we've just been expanding real fast to so the first window wide open, which is the throw they're gonna make. And here he took away the first window by the tight end. Look at him look. Look at him look. That's a great job. Wow. And squared up. Woo. He looked like a linebacker. How much you weigh? Sam, how much better? How much you weigh? Uh, he, he's dropped some pounds. I give him about 330. Oh my goodness. 325. 330, 330 and dropping like that. He looked better than my linebacker sometimes. That's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, he got you know, hey, my, my father was with me this uh weekend, so that's why I come down to Houston for a while. We sitting there watching games together. He said, Man, that D lineman, they never on the ground. He said, they have great feet. Watch them run, watch them change direction. My dad, old, old defensive coordinator himself, and uh, he made those comments just watching the game with us. I'm like, man, he's right. They got, they have great feet. They don't be on the ground. They are always moving, and they're always moving forward or going where they have to go. So I listen to my dad talk. I still learn from my dad. He's 91 years old. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead. Hey, man. You know, he clearly, clearly knows a lot of football because I'm looking at you, Vance. They had to start somewhere, right? Just had to get him somebody. Dad. Best coach ever been around. He coached me in, in high school, and that was a lesson. I could tell you some stories about that, but we don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back to the meeting room, Coach. And we are going to bring up yet another one. 
This is more a teach tape right here. Okay. We're a uh, double move. Ooh, okay. Now, let's hold it right there. So we've got FSL formation. Again, they have speed receiver to the boundary, a tight end and a receiver to the field. So it's formation to the boundary. So now we're, we're in quarters coverage. So just look at the safety of the alignment. You know what coverage we're in. We're in quarters coverage. A lot of people in quarters coverage, that a lot of corners are pressed. But my thing is this. The ball is on his hash. That receiver is at the top of the numbers. It means he is over split. He's extra wide. My philosophy as a coach, and it don't, doesn't make it right, just my philosophy in general, don't press that. Do not press that guy for that ball. That quarterback, he drops back on his ass and throw the ball to the numbers. That's 30 yards. He got to be John Elway, huh? Thank you. So <laughs> I'm going to back off. I'm back off eight yards. I'm going to be inside technique, be tempo, be patient, and I'm in good shape. Well, he walks up and press. And so because of the split, he's inside technique, which means the receiver is going to probably go, if he's going outside, yeah, he's there. And now he run a double move. But he puts himself in hard way by pressing the guy Who's over split? Now let's, let's, let's think about this. What if we play in Ohio State right now, and, and, and that's the junior out there, the May team? If I'm Ohio State, I'm, I'm getting this formation. And if I see my two, two safeties sitting right there, and I got them 18 out there, basically in zero coverage, I'm not throwing that ball to him. And so we're on the jump ball. It, it, it just, to me, that's a gimme. That's, that's asking for invitation. It's like, hey, throw it right here, throw it right here, and that's what happens. Here's a double move right now, but I, I wouldn't imp- I wouldn't impress this guy in over split right there. So I, all eyes at the top. He's a double move, pitch and go, and there we go, fellas. There we go. I mean stuff like that. Bowling Green guys are double double move. To me, football is about common sense, understanding what I have to do within the scheme of the defense, and then why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay. So for that corner, understand this. That guy ain't not finna run no dog going hitch with you in the press and he's outside, he's on the numbers. Stay on top of that guy. That's why I'm backed off in eight yards deep and they throwing a hitch. I'm finna take that to the house the other way because I've got time and distance because I'm off technique and I can see what's going on. When you're in press, you're playing through him, but that kid did not understand with that kind of split, you're not finna get no hitch right out there from no press alignment. That's not happening. So to me, that's a learning experience. And again, that's just an old DB's experience on things I learned the hard way. You know, I got beat on things that way. I wasn't perfect. I mean, I learned the old hard way. Like mama say, don't, don't touch that stove, it's hot. Well, guess what dummy did? I wouldn't touch that stove. The second time, I wasn't touching that stove. So as a DB coach, I've been burned quite a bit. So I, my thing is, don't make the same mistake again. So I'm just passing on the little knowledge I do have. Hopefully someone's listening to me. Gotcha. All right. Let's move on to the next one, Coach. Hokey backer one dog. Man, look at the twist. Look at the stunt. Wow. I mean, come on now. Come on, come on, come on. That's what I'm talking about right there. I mean, again, this, this is a third down, and we're attacking protection. You can see all the twists inside. Ah. Uh. They just can't block it. They just can't block it. We got too many things going on. They do a great job attacking protections and setting things up right now. So we're going to look at the end zone copy right here in a minute. So here we go. So again, free right here. right here. So again, they have seven-man protection. This is max protect. They have enough guys to actually block this. But a lot of times, people going big on big. I hear Al talk about where they go big on big. So both tackles got the two outside guys. The center got the nose. The two guards, they got the two backers standing up. The tight end got anything coming off the edge. And so that's good. They cut my yard outside, so forget the, forgive me about the nose. Mm-hmm. But what we do is that we know that the center is going to lock up on our nose. So when the nose locks up on him, the 25, he goes right and looking for an open gap to go. Okay. My other linebacker has a tight end man to man. If he blocks, okay, we go right here. Those guys off the edge, you can see what's going on, okay? The two stand up backers, they reading this. They got a twist on. You can see what's happening right now. So they read it first and second, like we like to do, the dotted line. The linebacker 23, he got the tight end. If he blocks, he adds to the blitz. He's a bonus baby. He blocks, I become a rusher. So now, 
we've got six guys coming. This is great for protection. We locked the center up on the nose. Now 25, he can read it. Step right, step left. He starts, he reads it, comes back. Look at that. Look at 23. Man, we got a dance here. I mean, that's a great job. This is a great job attacking protections. I mean, a lot of people don't do that. They either blitz from the field, they blitz from the boundary. This defensive staff here, they scheme things up where they could turn guys loose. They get pick patterns up front with the twist. This is a great job. This is a great job. And the defensive players, they do a great job of flying around to the ball and executing the scheme to perfection. I love it. Here's Absolutely. another look at it again. The 25, actually, as he comes around, he checks the back. He's second, but he's coming around, he's checking the back, and now he knows I can go. Man, I just love what they do here. The scheme-wise, the technique, they see him right there, boom, watch him, boom. Look at, look at 25. They don't know what to do. They turn everybody loose. All the twists, they turn everybody loose. <laughs> All right. So there was one play doing a great job. I knew you were going to break down this play, man. Ooh, hey. This is, this is low like blitz. It is right here. So now, as we can see, and you know, I, I can't help it. I'm going to go to the defensive side first. If you guys remember, we talked about low defense. Okay, load is an overload to a side. So you're looking to the boundary. We got a loose five. We have a four eye. We have a, a shade, a one technique. Okay, so we've got an overload. We got three guys over here. So the offensive line, protection wise, they have to turn right over here. And that means the center is going to take the nose. Okay. The, the left guard should block down. The Mike Backer right here, he's going to blitz also. So what the nose is going to do, he's going to go across to the other, to the A gap. So when the center locks up on him, that means the center just picked the left guard off. Hmm. The four eye is going vertical. The defensive end going vertical. There's nobody to block the linebacker. Again, this is a great scheme to attack protection. I love all right. it. All right, so now let's let's show them. So the people who don't know all uh, the what four I is, and okay, uh, so they can actually see what you're talking about. And we're gonna have an end zone copy of it in a minute. Look at that <laughs> sack, cause fumble, fumble recovery. Man, he, he should go to Vegas. <laughs> hey, he he going to the po to, to the poker uh, table. I got three aces, baby. Ace of spade, ace of club, and because I like it so much, the ace of heart. It's all good. <laughs> Look at that. That's outstanding. So here we go. Here's a good pitch. Freeze it right there, Sam. So you can see right now, I've got a loose five technique. He's on there. There's a guy on the offensive tackle. He's a four eye. Oh, he might be a four technique. The nose is a two eye. He's an inside shade of the guard. The backer, he's an A gap weak. You can see him in the A gap. And then you've got a wide five technique. So this side of protection should go. The right tackle should turn out on the guy on space. The right guard should block the four technique. The center. Is taking the nose. The left guard is taking a backer, and the tackle is taking the left defensive end. He's blocking out. But when the nose comes across to the opposite A gap, the center takes him, he walls off the guard. That makes it clean right now for the backer in the A gap. Okay, now if I was the offensive line coach, this is what this is what offensive line coach gonna say. You get that twist right now, they're going full slide that way. The center should have let the nose go and the guard pick him up, and that nose on paper should protect the A gap. They didn't do that. The center locked up on the nose, so guess what? My man Junior is scot free for a sack, a cause fumble, and a fumble recovery. Again, great scheme, great execution, and another win for the Wolverine. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Ah, you can't play any better than that. <laughs> you see the guard? The guard was like, who do I block? <laughs> oh, my goodness. The guard blocked nobody. Look at the center. The guard and the center, they blocked nobody. They like the center turned them loose. The guard wasn't, wasn't sure. Oh, my goodness. I would love to be in an offensive line meeting room like, <laughs> what are you doing? I can't hear that offensive line coach say, they in low defense. They go full slide. It's not a problem. You block the A, you block the B. We gotta protect it. 
I would love for Al to break Jensen down and hear what he had to say. I would love to. <laughs> Professor Al on this play. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they they confuse the hell out of the the uh the center and the left guard. They know man. But see again, they going to the, the slide here. The center should stay in a gap. He's wrong. I can tell you what happened right now. He's wrong right now. And that and the guard he has the other a gap. So they blocking a and a. This protection they said that is picked up. It's just poor execution right here. Great execution by Michigan's defensive line and poor execution by the offensive line. It's tough playing against the schemes that the defensive staff comes up with every week to attack protection. I love watching these guys play defense. That's a great job. That's a great job. It's all like, hey, we're going to meet at the water cooler right now. The quarterback <laughs> water cooler. We're going to meet at the water cooler. Somebody, you got the donuts, you got the cupcakes, I got the coffee and the tea. That's right. What a great job. Boy, boy, boy. I, as, I, think, I think the bear has been watching you. <laughs> hey, if that's the case, hey, tell them to send me some cupcakes. <laughs> no, nah, man, you know what? It, it's an opportunity to talk about a couple of things as we bring up the last play. You got a player who is really taking his experience. I mean, he's he's been at the position now for a little while. You know, he's a veteran. He's seen a lot. He's playing more instinctive football. He's playing at all Big Ten level right now. Looking like a pro. Yeah, see, but you know what? Each week we've gotten better and better and better. In the first four ball games, I kept talking about Russ, Russ, Russ. Now, uh uh. All these guys are stepping up. They've improved every single game. They really have. I mean, I've seen some good things. I look at my big man, he drop out, he looks guys up. And there's some other clips that I didn't show. That the defensive ends were doing the same thing. They're actually taking a look at the first guy outside of them. So I, I could see some positive things. So I don't know if, if the Michigan staff listened to our program or not, but if you ask me, somebody's saying something to them because the things we talk about each week, I see them uh, executing that in the game. Yeah, it's funny how how the impression from fans, uh, I'll say it again as we go into this last play, felt like, ah, this was just not a, you know, the, the, the defense showed some some real holes. Uh, I mean, you you gotta when you talk about a team as good as Michigan, uh, you know, winning fifty two to seven. Anything you say sounds a, a bit like nitpicking, but and you you know you get it. You want them to improve, but I kind of felt like some of the talking points coming out of this game were a little overboard, especially when I heard you say you thought it was an excellent. I mean, there were some things to clean up, but you felt like it was an excellent showing by this defense. It was. I mean the. The adjustments and the things they did, play flicker. Okay, later on the game, they came out in the same kind of formation. Those guys, they executed to perfection. It wasn't flea flicker with a pass, but the back of the covers, they all made adjustments, so they got that corrected on the sideline during the game. To me, what I saw is this a dominant game. They had some nickel and dime stuff, and people get upset about that. I don't. That's part of the game. They have guys on scholarship just like Michigan does. And so, overall, I see great pursuit. That's how you eliminate big plays in the run game. I don't see defensive linemen or linebackers on the ground. That's how you eliminate big plays in the run game. I see when the ball's thrown downfield, I see defensive linemen retreat making plays and run support. I see secondary fitting where they're supposed to fit. So as an overall defense, I've seen some really, really good football. And each week I can see that progress getting better and better and better. We're getting ready for the big games. Our last three games now are going to be tough. We got to take Michigan State coming up right. Mm -hmm. They're not very good. I don't make that that they can be mad down there and, and sporty land and all that good stuff. Like like one of my former bosses say, they stink. I'm just gonna be honest with you, just that way they stink. <laughs> we we gonna beat the brakes out. This this stuff about little brother and all of that. Uh, 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 this little brother, he not even born yet. That's how little he is. Okay, so I'm just gonna shoot that out right now. I hope I make somebody mad. <laughs> and go, hey, like I said, what are they gonna do? They come tell them, come find me. I might be in Houston. I might be in Colorado. So it's, uh, send them sporties after me. I'm all over the place, so I'm in two places at one time. But no, no, but Sam, I've seen great improvement week to week to week. I've seen some really good things. They clean up some some minor things that we have spoken about over the past few ball games. So no, I'm excited about things going forward. All right, so this last play, uh, I I set it up talking about hey, anytime you talk about a team winning 52 to seven, having a dominant effort like you talk about, you know you to get 
when you talk about them improving, you're you're nitpicking the little things even on good plays. So we're gonna highlight the good play, and then you're gonna highlight the play within the play, Van. So you say, okay, if I'm coaching, I'm telling my guy who wasn't in on the play, you need to do this better. So I I, I set it up, Van, so you you can talk us talk the listeners and the viewers through it the way earlier. So this is uh high, ended on a high note with an interception. We in cover six. We're in cover six. We're in cover six. We're rotating to the bottom. The corner, he's a flat defender, cloud technique. The safe is a half field technique. Okay, the uh, the guy to the boundary, quarter flat, the middle back, a three hook. Okay, the, the back to the top, he quarter flat. The safety to the field is a quarters technique. The corner is a quarters technique. Now, I want everybody to look at the formation. I have cut splits on both sides. And what that means is they shorten, they splits down. And that is why. The guy to the field on the hash, that's the indicator. The guy to the, pound, to the boundary on the top of the numbers. A lot of times when you get those kind of routes, you're getting deep over routes, you're getting some type of crossing patterns. Every once in a while, you might get an outside route, but most people, it's some kind of over route with a post pattern. Okay. That's just a basic concept you see in high school, college, and the NFL. Okay. So, on this situation here, the corner to the field, he's outside technique quarters. So, in this situation here, if number one, that receiver, he does anything, anything inside or over route, the safety is going to take that. So, now that, that field corner, he should now replace him deep. So if I get a dig route by the number one receiver, he should climb that hash mark looking for the guy from the boundary to be coming back over to the field, whether it's another deep over route or deep post. He becomes a bonus baby on this right now. Okay? So now, Sam, let's just let this rock and roll. Baby. Let's rock. So this safety, he's a half field guy, did a great, great job. He got plenty of depth. He intercepts his football. He did a great job. Okay, if I'm grading this, he got a plus for technique and a plus for yep. So now freeze it. Oh, go back. They can't see it. Okay, we're gonna go back. Okay. So right there, I'm good. So everybody can see the release of the guy to the field. See, I, I call this a ladder route. In other words, he's taking a ladder inside for depth, and then he runs a dig route. And the safety sitting down on him. So that corner right now. He should be getting the corner to the field. He should be getting depth down at hash mark. I'm looking for a double move by the X, or I'm looking for something coming back over the top. I got to protect my safety right now. So he should be going right down that hash mark for depth, reading the quarterback. That's what he should be doing right now. So if I'm grading this video, if I, if I have covered this, I'm giving him a minus on technique grade right now. Because what, what is he doing right now? No adage is, brother, go find some work. Go find some work. He's doing nothing right now. Go. Okay, so let it keep running. Great job by the safety. The corners have been back there. The corners have been back there with him. Like I said, I was, and I said this earlier, I went to visit Seattle two years ago in, in, uh, in camp. And they worked these kind of routes in cover three, cover two, quarter, quarter, half, quarters. And when they got that route, that corner, when that guy did that, he was hauling his tail through the middle of the field to help out the backside safety. I mean, they worked on that route over and over and over again. It was very impressive. Then I watched him play during the season. I've seen that corner backside in the second football because he strengths the field. In other words, he is finding work. He's cutting the field until he finds somebody in a different color jersey. But again, you got to work on those type of things, and they can get better at that. But again, split of receivers tells you a lot. Nice job. Nice way to finish this, this talk off. And I'm glad to see my man come down with that interception. That's a nice play. The defense, once again, in my opinion, they had a great game, a great outing. Little minor things here and there. You get beat on a flea flicker, so what? Life goes on. But otherwise than that, great job. Well, folks, I hope you learned something. I hope you feel edified as and I hope you feel better about that defensive performance where you pointed out something that Al pointed out as well. He said, look, you, you had a team that had two weeks to prepare. Uh, they're bringing some things you haven't seen to the table. Uh, they came with some with some nice schemes out there that kind of got you, got them across for a little bit of time. And then Michigan adjusted and it was I mean, it was over. It was canceled Christmas after that, as I like to say, Vance, where they just didn't have the talent to stay with Michigan, obviously. 
the end. It, it did on either side of the ball. It, it didn't have the personnel to match up. You know, our offensive line and defensive line so far this season has been dominant. They really have. I mean, you look at every game we play, you know, you have some things here and there, but you should because they have 85 guys on scholarship also. But for the most part, you get to the fourth quarter, game's been over. Both sides of the ball, including special teams, all three phases have been very dominant. And and when you say we got to win big games, the last three games of the year, I mean, think about it now, back to back to back, Penn State, Maryland, and, and, and Ohio State, it's going to be some tough sledding. You're going to have three physical games back to back to back to finish the season off and then the Big Ten Championship. So the best thing we, we've done this year is we built depth. Guys gotten a lot of experience. And a lot of times when got you you rotate guys in, we don't miss a beat. That's been the best thing about what I'm seeing right now. We're not missing a guy when he step out. You know, Big Graham had missed a couple of ball games, and we had some minor, minor issues, but now all of a sudden they disappeared too. Because when you get an opportunity to play, you gotta realize I don't give them any snaps, so I'm out there. I put a I put a ball out if I want to get add more snaps to my table. And that's what I've been seeing so far this season. So so far, my hats off to the staff and to the players. Keep it going. And again, the Michigan State game, they told me, look, brother, look, brother hadn't been born down there yet. Okay. Sparty, he hadn't been born. That's how close <laughs> the game going to be. All right, folks, that'll do it for another edition of the Michigan Football Film Study focused on the defense with Vance, Vance Bedford. I'd like to remind you. Now, we don't own this footage because we don't own the footage. We don't get advertising on it. We don't monetize it in any way. We use it strictly for the entertainment, education, and edification of you, the viewer. But you can help keep these film studies going by clicking that link in the comment section, clicking that link in the description. Either one will take you to the fun, the film study with Vance Bedford PayPal page and a lot of you been showing love, but Vance and Tiki and Maggie, they can always use more love, right? Let me, can say, always let me say one thing, Sam. I, I've had a, I follow back a lot of uh, people who hit me up on uh, Twitter. But just to let you know, if I don't see a Michigan or a gold blue for people who won't add me as a friend, I don't click on to it because I don't know where you're coming from. But if I see Michigan or gold blue on it, Sam, I've probably hit anywhere from a 75 to 100 people. I really have. And then they hit me up on Saturday watching the game. So I, I, I've actually enjoyed I sit there with my, my phone. We checking out some of the comments. And uh, I'll be like, I, one guy say, I'm looking at this like Vance looking at this. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I say, we in trouble. <laughs> so I've been having a lot of fun with it. I, thanks for following me. And again, if I see a Michigan or Go Blue on, on your handle, I will follow you back if I don't. I don't know who you are. You could be some kind of insurance man trying to sell me some scam insurance. So, no, we're not going that route, Sam. Well, well, so here's what. So the producer that's putting this together, put this on the screen for him, at Coach VJ Bedford. That's his Twitter. And if you – but he's not going to follow you if you don't have Michigan or Go Blue in your, in your handle somewhere. So you want some, some Twitter love from Coach Vance. That's how you get it. But show your love by helping for the film study. That's how we really going to get Vance those buffalo steaks. We going to get him those, those briskets, all that barbecue you've been promising for years, and Tiki's buffalo bone and all that. The way we going to get that is by funding this film study. So click that link, and we'll see you next week on another edition of the Michigan Football Film Study focused on the defense with Vance Beth. Go Blue.